He was the game changer, revolutionising English football both on and off the field. But today, amid growing fan frustration, the game was finally up for Arsene Wenger. It does mean we need to be bold in the appointment and get the person we believe is the right person. Hi right, guys, welcome to episode 3 of Wenger Out, Fry In. So a brief introduction of how this works. Arsene Wenger obviously resigned recently. I've looked at all the potential candidates that have been linked over the last three years, four years, five years. Um, he's basically been linked at taking over from Wenger. I've put them in as Arsenal manager and I've simulated a season to see how well they perform, who they buy and uh, yeah, what they get out of their players and if they do a good job. And then basically from that I've worked out who is the worst, who is the best. I've started with the worst. Um, this episode will obviously be the 18th worst manager. And then the series will finish with who is the best and who should be the Arsenal awesome manager. All right, let's see who done well in 18th place. So we've loaded it up. Manager of Arsenal, Luis Enrique. Well, he's the, the favourite to, uh, to, to take over, I'd say, at the moment. But... I didn't actually start with Luis Enrique, which is interesting. So this is who Arsenal have gone after, after this person has gone. So when I said that Allegri was the only one that got sacked, I made a mistake there. And he wasn't the only one that got sacked, because he, unless he left. But Enrique is in charge now, and he wasn't when I started the game. So let's see who was originally there. Who is in 18th place? Maurizio Sarri, yes, it's that guy that was linked in the paper again today, his agent being in London. He only lasted the season, and he's been sacked. So that is interesting. Luis Enrique is the guy he's gone for. Maybe that's an indication. Will he take over? We don't know. Let's have a look. Let's see how Siri done. Let's see why he got sacked. So we'll start with his transfers. Again, no one really well known. Again, players going out, all low knees. But if we look at who came in, Raul Rui Diaz from Morelia. So, 27-year-old Peruvian. Not too bad, not too bad. Four goals in nine appearances. So, he didn't do too bad, to be fair. Don't know where they got him from. Yeah, Morelia, sorry, from Mexico. They signed him two years ago for 77000 Then Arsenal signed him for £10 million. So, some good profit making there. Pablo Piatti from Espanol. I always used to sign this guy. Always. Let's have a look. Good at corners. He's got average stats now. He's not as good as he used to be on the game. But, yeah. Left winger. Um, didn't score any goals. 19 appearances, 2 assists. Not too bad, but uh, he could have done, could have done better. But, like I said, he's got... He's a balanced player. Um, I wouldn't have him as a starter. And then Fernando, defensive midfielder. Is he the one that used to play for Man City? No, I'm thinking of someone else. Shakhtar, Sampdoria, Spasak, Moscow is obviously where we signed him from. But yeah, he's good. He's good at passing. He's good at marking. His tackling's not the best, but again, he's got good technique. His positional awareness is good. Good decision making, good anticipation. You can read the game. Yeah, it's not the best physically, but he's a defensive midfielder. He tries killer balls, comes deep to get the ball. He's a typical Arsenal player. Again, he's not someone that I would have signed, but obviously that's why Sarri is no longer there. Right, what tactics did Sarri play, and what tactics should I not use when playing as Arsenal? A 4 one 2 three. So, again, we don't know if this is the general team lineup, but Ozil again in that, that centre midfield position, the one that Allegri used him in, it hasn't worked very well. So, for any of you watching out there, do not play Ozil in the centre because <laughs> he's not able to do it. Aubameyang up front. Right, so now we've seen the players in their positions. How did they perform? So, Aubameyang, the clear leader in terms of goals and the only output in goals really from that 30 goals in 55 games next person is Lacazette 12 goals that is a very poor return and you play what 37 games 
So like one and three. Bear in mind he's played more. I'm guessing he's played more as a winger in this game, but still not the best performance. Only 12 goals, and then 10 from Henrik Mkhitaryan. So they're the top three scorers in the squad. Assists. Meza Ozil with 15 in 56 games. So again, not the best return for what you can normally get out of Meza Ozil. So by the looks of it, playing him in that centre midfield position, he's he might be dictating the play a bit more than what he would further forward, but he's definitely not contributing and setting up goals as much as he would as if he was in the advanced playmaker role. Aaron Ramsey with 10 assists. And then after that, he just got... Lacazette on five, Wilshire on five, Mkhitaryan on four. Okay, so any standout performers? Aubameyang, Ozil, and Rob Holden, surprisingly, but he only played four games, so we can't really give it to him. So it, some players on some OK average ratings, but not not the best and not as good as they could have been. So let's have a look to see how they performed in the competitions. So we'll start with the Community Shield, a 1-0 defeat to Chelsea. So not the best start for Arsenal. A goal from George McEachran. He had a pretty good season for Chelsea, to be honest. But most of them games are in the under-18s. So I think, if you look at it, no, not any proper games for Chelsea last season. So Arsenal lost to his goal. And a defeat at Wembley there, not a good start for Sarri. So the next competition, the Carabao Cup. Again, going out at the third round. Straight away, a 2-2 draw. We lost on penalties to Everton. Granit Xhaka with a red card. And then he and Awobi with the goals. So, I know the Carabao Cup's only uh, one where we normally put the youth players in. But, I mean, Maverick Panas was there, Maitland-Niles and, and Ketia. But apart from that, it was a very strong squad. So, they should have done better. The FA Cup next. And again, a third round defeat. This time at home to Crystal Palace. Uh, more of a youthful sides, but it's still you had Aubameyang in there. Ospina, Mertesacker, Ozil. Very disappointing. An early and a late goal. Benteke, Kabai. And again, in the Cups, we just... Sarri just couldn't do it. He's not a cup man. We know that. He's not a cup man. Right. The Europa Cup. So, a better performance here. As you can see, there's quite a lot of games here. And we've got all the way to the final. Won every game in the group stage. PSV, Lugano, Locomotive. Comfortable win in the first knockout round against Vitesse. And then we have Bilbao. The only other game that we didn't win was a draw. Then we beat Atalanta and Lazio. That's a semi-final home game. Aubameyang was the man. Aubameyang away as well. Aubameyang with a hat-trick there, so... Our key man there was definitely Aubameyang. What about in this game? Raul Rui Diaz. So, yeah, so before that, Aubameyang didn't really score. He likes, he wanted to wait until the uh, the quarterfinal before he started getting in on the act. But yeah, Olympic Marseille in the final. Let's have a look at the game. So, Florian Talvin, ex-Newcastle United. It was once touted as a very, very good... Good young player, but not really seen too much of him. But valued at 54 million. 54 million for Talvin. What was his performance? 15 goals in 53 games, 21 assists. So, to be fair, his stats aren't the best, but he, he's done done very well. But yeah, Mandanda with the man of the match there. Arsenal dominated the game. Only five shots from uh, Marseille, two on target. But the one on target, it counted and it went in. Arsenal with 11 shots, five on target, dominated possession, but just couldn't score. Aubameyang couldn't get in on the act. Mkhitaryan was poor. Ozil played well and the defence played pretty well, to be honest, but not good. Not a good result there. But they got to the final, which is probably more than what they're going to do this season. So, yeah. Now... Europe out of the way. Let's look at the Premier League. How do we do there? So, one, two, three. So, towards the end of the season, this is probably why I got sacked. A lot of defeats here. Started the season off not too bad. Some nice wins. And then some draws started creeping in. Beat United 1-0. 
beat Man City 2 1. Aubameyang starred in both of them games as well. A 2 2 away draw to Spurs. Aubameyang getting on the axe. Beat Liverpool 1 0. 0 0 with Chelsea. So some good results there, but then we lost. Our first defeat was a 2 1 away defeat to Swansea. Not good that one. Drew with United. Drew with Man City. And then, yeah, this is where it started to turn sour. Newcastle with 2 0 defeat. Mertesaka, Chambers. Yeah, very weak squad there by the looks of it. 1 0 draw with Leicester. 2 0 defeat to Liverpool. And then Aubameyang got injured. I wonder how long he was out for. Now, we came back for the next game and he scored, but we drew with Spurs. Chelsea we lost to, Brighton we lost to, Bournemouth we lost to, Huddersfield. It's much like this season, to be honest. But yeah, he didn't end very well. And overall, he finished sixth. Again, probably what we're going to do this season. I can't see us finishing fifth or in the top four, uh, unless we have a very good run. But yeah, six points behind Liverpool there. 11 points behind fourth place Spurs. And 23 points behind Man United. So, eight defeats. Man United and Man City lost seven apiece as well. Chelsea only lost three. But, again, it's all about the wins. The more wins you get, the more chance you've got to uh, to win the league. So, yeah. Not very good. Finished in sixth place. And, at the end of the day, Sarri was sacked. So, I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned, keep watching and you'll find out who will be the number one manager for Arsenal and who should get hired. Thank you very much, see you soon. Cheers, bye.